Hello, everyone, and welcome to this session on finding and using open textbooks and open educational resources. My name is Erica Smith, and I work in the Academic Development Center at Mount Royal University. And joined with me here today is Carrie Merkley from our Mount Royal University Library. In this session, we're going to be talking about two key themes. The first is around what open means. So those key ideas, terms, and definitions that surround open education and the resources related to it. Secondly, Carrie is going to give us a tour of ways to find and also use open educational resources, such as open textbooks. She will outline some search strategies and web resources that you can use to support your own teaching online. So firstly, to cover today, what is open? What do we mean by open educational resources? And what are some examples of those resources? Well, open can mean quite a lot of different things, and perhaps you've encountered these things in your own lives or in your own learning and not even realized it. Open educational resources, or OERs, include textbooks such as print and electronic materials. It can also include individual readings, such as an open access article that's being used for teaching and learning. It includes open software and applications, assessment tools, including things like test banks, videos, such as this one, podcasts, images, and many more things. To define open educational resources, we can look to UNESCO from the United Nations. Their definition is open educational resources, OERs, are those teaching, learning, and research materials in any medium that reside in the public domain or have been released under an open license that permits no cost access, use, adaptation, and redistribution by others with no or limited restrictions. So we can see that according to this definition, Flexibility, as well as cost, are key features of open resources. In an Albertan context, we can also see that this has been an item on the student's radar for quite some time. So on the left-hand side of the screen, we can see that uh, Shifra has made a post at the time. She was the president of the Students Association of Mount Royal University. And she's featuring an initiative called hashtag textbook broke Alberta. Now textbook broke is something that has highlighted the ways in which uh, students have been prohibited in their learning or in their lives by the cost of materials they need to purchase for their education. So for instance, in this case, we see a student saying that they spent over $400 on textbooks that could have been spent on things like rent, a car payment. And we know that this cost of materials is prohibitive for some and acts as a barrier to their education. On the right hand side of the screen, we can see that the cost of textbooks, in addition to tuition, has skyrocketed over the recent years, much higher than the overall consumer price index more broadly. So this increase in, in this particular case showing the increase from 2002 to 2012 over a decade, it really demonstrates how textbook costs are increasing at an exponential rate. And this has only continued after 2012. We know that these, these costs and the price of materials has continued to increase at a really alarming rate. So in addition to the cost benefit of having free and open materials that support teaching and learning, there are a number of other benefits of OERs. Firstly, access to materials during and after courses is a key benefit. So not only will students have access to their learning resources throughout the course that they're registered in, but they'll have access to these resources long after they finish their course. Secondly, we know that students achieve similar, or in some cases better, learning outcomes. When students have access to the learning materials and the information that they need, of course, they tend to do as well or better than when they have materials that they perhaps can't afford and therefore don't have access to. The third benefit is the ability to adapt content to your specific teaching needs. So that flexibility of being able to remix and redistribute content 
is really a key benefit for teachers who don't want to be reinventing the wheel, but do want something that is specific and authentic in their own teaching. Another benefit is that ability to update content with local references or information, uh, say for example, on a provincial or a municipal level that really speaks to the context that the learners are within. So an example of this might be taking information from an accounting or a legal textbook and updating it to reflect those particular regulations and laws in a specific city, province, or country. Next, this provides an ability to collaborate with students and colleagues. So if you're able to access materials and adapt them and redistribute them in a way that is useful for your own teaching and learning, and also in collaboration with others, it really extends the reach of our ability to impact uh, people for the benefit of the good within our own classrooms, but beyond the walls of academia. Finally, open educators really look for pathways to completion that have been opened up in order to reduce barriers for learners. And so an example of this would be the ZCRED degrees or in Canada where Kwantlen Polytechnic has created pathways that explicitly show learners how they can complete a particular program or a certificate or degree without those barriers in terms of the cost of materials. So those are really um, on the forefront of helping learners to avoid barriers to their higher education completion. So it's helpful to recap our definition of what open educational resources are to think of these five key components, the reuse, the revision, the remixing, the redistribution and the retention of materials. Those are really the five key elements, the five R's, if you will, that help us to see how and why OERs are flexible in terms of their use and in terms of helping to support education more broadly. The Creative Commons logo at the bottom also points to a key resource that we'd like to flag for you. Creative Commons has a great number of things that you can find and use in your own teaching and learning, but they also have a resource that can help you to create and define the terms within which your own materials may be used. So let's talk a little bit about the spectrum of open licenses as we can see them through the Creative Commons. So here we can see that uh, Cable Green from the Creative Commons organization, as well as uh, Spark has created this graphic to show really the spectrum of things that are from the least open to the most open. So things in the public domain or things that are CC BY, you might notice these icons on particular materials as you search for them. Those things are the most open types of resource. Now, sometimes there's good reasons to put on, say for example, the CC BY no derivatives, CC BY ND, the second one from the bottom. Uh, there could be cases in which you don't want there to be changes or remixes happening to materials. But this at least shows you that, firstly, there are icons that you can look for in order to understand how can this material be used or reused. And secondly, if you get to the point where you're creating your own materials, you can understand that there are a variety of licenses that allow you to define the terms under which your open items can be used and redistributed. You'll see that a common attribute here is of course that by symbol, and that simply means giving credit where credit's due. In other words, just giving attribution to the folks who have created that. So if I was using something by Carrie Merkley, I would CC by and give credit to Carrie as the creator and author of that resource. So now we're gonna turn over to Carrie to see the ways in which you can find and use open educational resources for your own purposes. Carrie, over to you. In this portion of the presentation, I want to walk you through some of the tools you might use to search for open resources you can use in your teaching. I'm starting on the library homepage and selecting research support. There you can see that there is a page for open educational resources. The first part of this page focuses on definitions as well as other resources you can go to to learn more about open educational resources. But I'm going to focus on 
some of the tools you can use to find them. In the Find OER section, one of the tools that's highlighted is called Oasis, and it's a great one to start with because it's an easy to use tool that searches across multiple repositories, particularly of open text. So just as an example, I'm going to do a quick search for geology. You can see that it does break it down by type of material, and in this case I'm going to focus on textbook. Scrolling down, the first result is from a Canadian provider, BC Campus, which I'll speak more to in a moment, as well as Libretex and other sources. If I'd like to get to the resource, I click on the title. You can now see I am in a, a new page, which is the BC Campus Open Education Library, which is a great collection of materials that have been sponsored by BC Campus, but as well as resources that have been adopted and are being used in BC institutions. I'm just going to scroll down a little bit so you can see a bit more information about this particular text, Physical Geology. It was written by Stephen Earle of Thompson Rivers University. Over here on the right hand side of my screen, you can see that it has quite a number of different versions that I'm able to access. I can look at this open text simply as a website, but if I prefer, if I would like to print it out, you can see that I can download the PDF, or it also offers versions that are usable in e-readers or Kindles. I'm going to go into the website to give you a bit of a taste of how this material is typically laid out. A lot of care is taken to try and design these resources to be as useful and effective as possible. And you can see that just like any other textbook, when you click on the read book option, that the material is broken down into more bite-sized chapters and even smaller sections. So you are able to navigate through the material that way. I'm going to go back to the library homepage and scroll past the Oasis search box. I have some additional tools listed by category. I've already mentioned BC Campus Open Textbooks, and you can actually go straight there as a place to search for content. Similarly, the eCampus Ontario collection has its own library. That's uh, another government-sponsored project that has provided funding for the development of OERs, but they also list OERs being used in Ontario institutions. While there is overlap between the BC Campus and eCampus libraries, there are some unique items in both collections. You'll also note the link to Open Education Alberta, which is a more recently launched project and hosts textbooks that are being created at Alberta institutions. But in this case, I actually want to take a look at the Open Textbook Library. This project is dominated by U.S. institutions. Like most of the collections I've mentioned so far, it does provide a keyword search. So I'm going to look for social work. One of the things I like about Open Textbook Library is for most of the content, you'll find reviews by other faculty who have considered it for use in their class. One of the questions that often has been raised in relation to open educational resources is their quality. So I just want to spend a moment talking a bit about what that peer review process might look like in this context. One of the things, of course, we normally would do is take a look at the expertise of the authors. And just like the geology textbook I focused on earlier, this one has been prepared by a faculty member affiliated with a university. We also can scroll down and read individual reviews by other faculty members at other institutions who were considering using this particular resource or are using it in their classes and typically these reviews will highlight both the strengths and weaknesses of this material. You'll also find when you go into many open texts, towards the beginning of the book, they will spend some time talking about what the writing and review process may have looked like for that particular text, 
and may highlight other peer review processes that took place or contributions by other experts in the field. So quality is still a concern, of course, like any other reading materials you might be selecting for your course, but these are some of the mechanisms you can use or look for to help you judge the appropriateness of the material in question. Your own expertise as a subject expert, of course, will serve you well. Back to the library homepage, I just wanted to mention LibreText because there are a number of Mount Royal faculty members who are currently or have contributed to this resource in the past. It's particularly strong in the sciences and we've had folks from chemistry and math contribute materials to it. So just as an example, here are some of the courses and related materials that have been shared by Mount Royal faculty through the LibreText platform. Focused on back to the library homepage. So far I've focused on the resources on the open textbook list, but let's take a moment and look at images, maps, and illustrations because images are often one particular type of open educational resource faculty members have been looking for. So this is not an exhaustive list of all of the sources for openly licensed image content. Consider it a bit of a taster, but I wanted to show you just as an example the Creative Commons image search. Erica has already spoken to Creative Commons licenses and how they explicitly state how the content can be reused. This image search allows you to search by keyword. And as I scroll down and hover over, you can see that the terms of the Creative Commons license that's been applied to this particular resource are highlighted using the icons here. So in this particular case, I have to give attribution to the creator. I can't be used for any commercial purposes and I can't alter this image in any particular way. So no derivatives, but the terms under which other content might be used will vary. So you're looking at the various icons to get a sense of how you might be able to incorporate this work into your own course. Back on the library homepage, another category worth highlighting is the open case studies. Case studies are a popular tool used in teaching, particularly in business, but other disciplines as well. This resource, Open Case Studies from the University of British Columbia, will be of particular interest. The case studies that are listed on this site are licensed for attribution only, so they can be revised, remixed for your own purposes. You'll also see that they cover a wide range of subject areas, including business, political science, social justice, and more. Another type of resource faculty members have been seeking as we've moved to online teaching are uh, interactive games, resources, and simulations. In that category, you can see a number of different sites highlighted. One I just wanted to mention was FET Interactive Simulations which is out of the University of Colorado and focuses on science-based simulation. These are set up so that you can simply link to the interactive uh, games and other activities that are featured on this page so you can move forward pretty quickly with incorporating them into your course. Finally, I did finally Back on the library website, I did want to mention some of the additional resources and repositories that are highlighted. One that I do recommend using is OER Commons. This tool is helpful because it searches across a wide range of types of open educational resources. So not just textbooks, but other kinds of interactive materials, images, and more. It's searchable by keyword, And it provides a lot of useful limits by education level, for example, but also material types. It clearly states the terms of use under which the material might be used. And in some cases, you'll also see user reviews as well. Finally, remember that the library has purchased 
or subscribe to on your behalf a wide array of resources that might also serve as course materials, including ebooks and streaming video. Use the search box on our library homepage to search for materials that might be incorporated into your Blackboard site. If you require assistance, please don't hesitate to reach out to your subject librarian or consider using our new syllabus service. Under COVID-19 syllabus service, you can submit your draft or last year's course outline and library staff will respond with links that you can embed in your Blackboard site, flag any materials that are not available electronically for the library to purchase, and also inform you of what materials might be digitized under fair dealing. As part of this service, you can also indicate if you would be interested in receiving suggestions of alternate open resources from your subject librarian, particularly if the resources you typically employ are not available for library purchase. So all of the resources that I've highlighted as part of this video can be found in this handout that we're linking to here on this slide. Thanks again. Yes, thanks everyone. And please do feel free to get in touch with either Carrie or myself at the email addresses listed here. And we have provided this QR code if you would like to access the handout via the QR function. Take care.